Tommy, you just don't do what the left does. We can't, conservatives wouldn't do it, and if they did do it, they'd be ridiculed and raked over the coals. Well, here's my question for Jessica. I mean, isn't this supposed to be a platform the left loves? We're talking about bullying. We're talking about cyberbullying. We're talking about being an advocate for that. Melania Trump is coming out in something that's not partisan at all. This is just no. a human thing. But yet they attack her for what she's wearing. And again, where are the feminists? They never come out. They what never come out when the Sarah Huckabee are, Sanders is the called feminists a butch are queen. everywhere. They're just not supporting Kellyanne Conway, who advocates for policies that hurt women. They're not thrilled Stop at hope. It. Stop. Hit. Why? She does not. We're not talking about Kellyanne Conway. Stop. We're really? talking about Melania Trump. You think that if you Why advocate for an agenda outfit? that does not help women get better access to health care, that does not raise the minimum bullying. wage, that does Jessica, not support maternity bullying. leave, you're right, not right, helping One at a time. Tommy. We're talking about cyberbullying. We're talking about Melania Trump mm -hmm. advocating for an end to cyberbullying. But yet the left goes after her and they ridicule her. And I don't see the feminists coming out saying, hey, leave, leave a woman alone. Leave a, an empowered female alone. I don't see the feminists doing that, Jessica. I don't. No, I totally take your point. I think that Melania should not be ridiculed for taking up that cause, certainly not ridiculed for her outfit. I was outraged when people after, went after Michelle Obama because she wore some J. Crew. You know, and Melania for these Can events could wear some J. Crew. But the issue with her taking up cyberbullying when her husband is the biggest cyber bully of them all is the problem. Why isn't she advocating for this at home? You know, you with know, him? So, can I just say one thing? You attack Kellyanne Conway. I've known Kellyanne Conway. I like Kellyanne I, a lot. I have a, I've known her. For you to say she doesn't advocate for women, she's the first woman to ever win a national campaign as a campaign manager. And a campaign she's, that because she's pro life. Because she's pro life. Well, there I are mean, many Democrats is, are pro Tim Kaine is pro life. Joe Biden is okay. pro life. The point is, she doesn't. Does, why are you attacking her? And I'm she's a strong advocate that for, she for women that are strong and independent. Oh, listen, as I said, I like Kellyanne Conway a lot. Mm. I have great respect for what she achieved. There should have been more articles about what she accomplished. The issue is with the agenda that she and the Trump There's administration promotes. Anti, Tommy, what's anti-woman about Trump's agenda? Well, and I think what's interesting as well is we've got President Trump, who's empowered many women. Look at his press secretary. Look at his White House communications director. Look at his campaign manager. All women. He has empowered women. But no, the left, they like to forget that because, oh, he sent off some mean tweets. That's all they can think about. He doesn't actually think about the steps and the actions of President Trump, what he's done to actually it's advance than and for the women's agenda. tweets, Tommy. It, you know, it really can is. I be, are you so sensitive, mean you tweets. people on the left? That, you know, did you ever hear sticks and stones thing? Yeah. Did you ever hear... You know what? Liberals are vicious to conservatives oh, constantly. I think both sides are vicious. So then call out your side. He's right. She needs to call out her side because of the exchanges that I've dealt with in my life, the most vicious people tend to be rich, white, liberal women. Just the meanest people I can think of. You know, there's a video, I think, of a, a Georgia woman, uh, I think in Atlanta, that don't don't quote me on the actual location, but I think it I think it came out of Georgia because it was shared from a Georgia account. A woman in a wealthy neighborhood uh, got up in someone's ring camera and starts screaming, and th because the person had a Trump sign in their yard, and this woman was absolutely off her rocker. When the reality is, Trump's policies by and large are better for women. And I'll get to that in just a moment, but first we gotta really talk about, oh, okay, we've really gotta talk about how feminism is a literal impossibility. Because if you have conservative women, then the feminists are inclined to be put into, not inclined, the feminists are put between a rock and a hard place. Do you attack these women and therefore completely under, undercut your your own point, which is you're there to support women. Okay, that's what feminism is supposed to do. It's to support women, make sure they're getting equal rights. And right now what it really is, is a giant grift that is designed around this uh, insane bits of policy points where it's no longer about equality, but pushing more women forward pu and pushing men to the side. Ultimately, the impossibility of modern feminism is that if conservative women exist, you have two options. You can either ignore it, like you should, because these women might have a point that goes against your point, so that way you aren't out there uh, not supporting women, 
or you can directly insult, verbally abuse, and go after that conservative women, and therefore prove yourself to be impossible. Because if you're attacking women, you aren't supporting women. Okay, it's really that simple. And they can't really grasp the grasp this problem because again, this is a logical impossibility. This is a what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object sort of situation here. And then we've got to go for policy by policy. Remember, under Donald Trump, women were making more money. Okay? Under Donald Trump, there was less illegal immigration. There was more social mobility. The policies the Republicans almost always of understand at their core is that Republicans are good at cutting taxes. Now, what does cutting taxes do? It means that you're opening up more money for investment. More money for investment means new businesses. New businesses usually mean a larger middle class and an expanding uh, an expansion of jobs for lower class people. And that in turn actually brings in more revenue because once you've opened up investment, you now have more money to tax. It's this weird impossibility that works in the opposite direction. It's something that makes no sense on its head, but ultimately works. Unlike feminism, which is now being pushed as an almost anti-woman movement because it's under Democrats that they are okay with putting men in women's sports. It is under Democrats that we keep on having to say her name. Her name is Lakin Riley. That's the name of the uh, University of Georgia student who, which by the way, Athens, Clark County, and I say this every time I bring up her name because it needs to be heard. Athens, Clark County is a third world country, all right? The roads are terrible. All the highways are just rough. It looks like it goes through a bad cracking in winter every single year, except that no one ever fixes the road and it never snows in Georgia. So it makes no sense. Uh, the people are sort of huddled together in these terrible little house, uh, houses. The, the area is just awful. I know I drove around the entire place delivering medical supplies in 2020. So I know what the infrastructure looks like. I know what the people are like. The people try to be nice, but they know that they're in a third world country and they resent it. Meanwhile, there is a first world resort called the University of Georgia. And finally, because Democrats for some reason love uh, releasing violent criminals who are also illegal immigrants. And because uh, this man saw Lake and Riley and thought, ooh, I want a piece of that. She said no, resisted, and he killed her. Okay, that's what Democrats do. And then the audacity of the people uh, who run athens Clark County. Uh, the mayor had to come out and say, don't hate immigrants because of this. Not, we are sorry for Lake and Riley. This should have never have happened. We need to do better about protecting our citizens. No accountability whatsoever. And instead he cared more about people being mean to of uh, the illegal immigrants that are running amok in athens Clark County. Okay, that is the exact same mentality of feminists. Okay, instead of tackling the problem, instead of admitting that, hey, someone else might have a point, I might be doing something wrong, they are forced to take a position where they're either anti-woman or they don't talk about conservatives who have legitimate policy points that need to be heard. Ultimately, these feminists have the same problem as Democrats because they ultimately will attack women who are doing things the right way. That's what ultimately happens. Democrats, if there's a Democrat listening to the show, I know a couple, I know some of y'all, I've worked with y'all. A lot of you are good people, but you have got to realize that you need to move back to the Bill Clinton days and not this weird uh, pseudoscience that you have of the, uh, of the Obama coalition, okay? You've got to move back to your old days where you cared about the American worker, where you cared about illegal immigration, and you cared about getting your spending under control. This has got to happen, folks. And until then, it looks like Republicans are going to continue to win in landslides, because I think that's what's going to happen in the coming weeks in this upcoming election. At least that's what I hope happens, or else it's going to be more of this mind virus garbage. That's what's going on here. And Jessica Tarloff, bless your heart, I think you actually do believe in what you're saying. But uh, come on, come on, honey. Do better. <laughs>